Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Friday, December the 4th. Today is the day the church recognizes the life of John of Damascus, who was a theologian and hymn writer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, the Lord comes to save us. O come, let us worship him. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapter 10. When the Lord had finished all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, he will punish the speech of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the boastful look in his eyes. For he says, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding. I remove the boundaries of peoples and plunder their treasures. Like a bull I bring down those who sit on thrones. My hand has found, like a nest, the wealth of the peoples, and as one gathers eggs that have been forsaken, so I have gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved a wing or opened the mouth or chirped. Shall the axe boast over him who hews with it, or the saw magnify itself against him who wields it? As if a rod should wield him who lifts it, or as if a staff should lift him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord God of hosts will send wasting sickness among his stout warriors, and under his glory a burning will be kindled, like the burning of fire. The light of Israel will become a fire, and his holy one a flame, and it will burn and devour his thorns and briars in one day. The glory of his forest and of his fruitful land the Lord will destroy both soul and body, and it will be like as when a sick man wastes away. The remnant of the trees of his forest will be so few that a child can write them down. In that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no more lean on him who struck them, but will lean on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction is decreed, overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts will make a full end as decreed in the midst of all the earth. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians when they strike with the rod and lift up their staff against you, as the Egyptians did. For in a very little while my fury will come to an end, and my anger will be directed to their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will wield against them a whip, as when he struck Midian at the rock of Oreb, and his staff will be over the sea, and he will lift it as he did in Egypt. And in that day his burden will depart from your shoulder, and his yoke from your neck. Behold, the Lord God of hosts will lop the boughs with terrifying power. The great in height will be hewn down, and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with an axe, and Lebanon will fall by the majestic one. Our writing today is from the Epitome of the Formula of Concord, Article 11. 
A Christian should concern himself in meditation with the article about God's eternal election, only as far as it has been revealed in God's Word. His Word presents Christ to us as the Book of Life, which he opens and reveals to us by the preaching of the Holy Gospel, as is written in Romans 8.30, and those whom he predestined he also called. In him we are to seek the eternal election of the Father who is determined in his eternal divine counsel, Ephesians 1.11-12 that he would save no one except those who know his son Christ and truly believe in him. Other thoughts are to be entirely banished from the minds of the godly, for they do not come from God, but from the suggestion of the evil foe. With such thoughts he attempts to weaken or entirely remove us from the glorious comfort we have in this helpful doctrine. In other words, we know assuredly that out of pure grace, without any merit of our own, we have been elected in Christ to eternal life. No one can pluck us out of his hand, John 10, 29. He has not only promised this gracious election with mere words, but also certified it with an oath and sealed it with the holy sacraments. We can call these to mind in our most severe temptations and take comfort in them, and with them we can quench the fiery darts of the devil, Ephesians 6, 16. Besides, we should act with the greatest diligence to live according to God's will, as St. Peter encourages us in 2 Peter 1.10, make your calling and election sure. We should especially cling to the revealed word, which cannot and will not fail us. And about John of Damascus, theologian and hymn writer, John lived from about 675 A.D. to 749, and is known as the great compiler and summarizer of the Orthodox faith, and the last Greek, great Greek theologian. Born in Damascus, John gave up an influential position in the Islamic court to devote himself to the Christian faith. Around A.D. 716, he entered a monastery outside of Jerusalem and was ordained a priest. When the Byzantine emperor Leo the Assyrian, <clears throat> in A.D. 726, issued a decree, <clears throat> excuse me, issued a decree forbidding images, John forcefully resisted. In his apostolic discourses, he argued for the legitimacy of the veneration of images, which earned him the condemnation of the Iconoclast Council in A.D. 754. John also wrote defenses of the Orthodox faith against contemporary heresies. In addition, he was a gifted hymn writer, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain, and contributed to the liturgy of the Byzantine churches. His greatest work was The Fount of Wisdom, which was a massive compendium of truth from previous Christian theologians, covering practically every conceivable doc doctrinal topic. John's summary of the Orthodox faith lasts a lasting stamp on both the Eastern and the Western churches. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot comprehend how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death, you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth and there abandoned by all your disciples. You willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. 
for the sake of our misdeeds you were hit whipped crowned with thorns and treated wretchedly like a worm and not a man you were despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief so that even a heathen heart took pity and said behold the man for the sake of our sin you were counted a sinner and hung up between two evil doers as a curse you were pierced in hands and feet with nails and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink finally in great pain you gave up your spirit so that you could pay our debt and we could be healed by your wounds O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain, we give you thanks and praise. We pray you, let your holy bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort, and that we may boast in it, and that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, and all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us, walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, and suffering injustice with a good conscience. Amen. O Lord, through your servant John of Damascus, you proclaimed with power the mysteries of the true faith. Confirm our faith so that we may confess Jesus to be true God and true man, singing the praises of the risen Lord, and so that by the power of the resurrection we may attain the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.